Aha, here we are. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the budget vote webinar sessions. Uh, we started with the first one yesterday, and today we are on to the second one. It's a series of them until Thursday, the 1st of uh, July 2021. My name is Hector Motivator Matabe to be with you. Uh, throughout this session, and I am not alone. We do have uh, our panelists from the Gauteng Legislature, and let me hasten to say that uh, this webinar is sponsored by Gauteng Provincial Legislature and also Mail and Guardian. I want to welcome our listeners from the four community radio stations, Peli FM, most of you know Peli, uh, it's in, the, in uh, Atridgeville area, covering the Pretoria West area, Atridgeville. Eldos FM, covering Eldorado Park and a little bit of Soweto. Rainbow FM, somewhere there in the West Rand. And Teta FM in Orange Farm and the surrounding areas. All right, before we um, introduce our guests uh, who are here tonight, uh, let me give you this background quickly, that uh, as part of implementing the Houghton Provincial Legislature's oversight and public participation mandates, portfolio committees have recently undertaken a process of scrutinizing budget votes of the provincial government departments and the GPL for the 2021-2022 financial year. During this time, portfolio and standing committees assess the annual budgets of provincial government departments, which highlight budget allocations against annual performance plans. And um, Honorable Majiko, I know you cannot wait to give me that uh, difference between this and the, and the five-year plans. And then the process includes a determination and assessment of the department's performance against priorities identified in both the state of the nation address, which is the SONA, and the state of the province address, the SOPA, as they relate to government departments. The aim of 2021-2022 budget vote analysis is to provide committees of the legislature with an opportunity to scrutinize the budget allocated to departments. This analysis assists the, the, the committees yeah, in probably. making decisions. Are we, are we all right? Uh, please, if you can switch off our mics. I was a bit distracted there. If we can switch off yeah. our mics. Uh, this analysis assists the committees in making decisions of uh, whether the allocated budget of departments is in line with the planned performance targets as outlined in the department's annual performance plans. It is imperative that this analysis reveals whether the budget allocation and the APP remains aligned to the provincial priorities as outlined in the state of the province address of 2019 for their five-year political term. The current financial year budget allocations to the departments come at a time when the nation is seized with an enormous responsibility of combating the COVID-19 pandemic and its social and economic impacts on society. We all know about that and uh, you know, all affected in one way or another. This has led to many budget cuts to departments and stringent allocation of resources. All of this will have to will have some negative impact on service delivery for sure, and the implementation of uh, the province's um, uh, GT, GGT 2030 strategy that we all know about the growth strategy. It is, it is thus important for committees of the GPL to pay close attention to budgets of the departments and how they are spent to ensure that there's minimal impact on services delivery. Now, for those who are streaming right now and who, who are joining us, remember that uh, you can ask questions, but I'm going to allow uh, the panelists first to present, to give us um, uh, their presentations. And also, if there's any clarity needed on any of the issues that we are going to be touching on. But I was just thinking about all these uh, budget processes and are thinking about a personal budget that uh, I feel for those who make these budgets, because um, it's like when you're going to go into a mall and then you have your list of things to buy at a supermarket, you'd know that you might be wishing for a certain expensive uh, item or chocolate or whatever, but then you might come back with some things not included in there. And I suppose that's what happens when uh, we are dealing with these budgets. But we want to know, uh, as members of the public, we'd want to know, because I know that uh, it's one of the mandates, uh, public, public participation happens to be uh, one of the mandates of the Houghton Provincial Legislature. So good evening to you, all our panelists. Um, let us welcome 
uh, Honorable Kekana, RJ uh, Kekana from Social Development. Charles, 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 can you can you wave Honorable Kekana? Thank you. Uh, and let us also welcome from Cocta. Uh, if you were given an invitation in advance, you would you'd be expecting Honorable Diale, but we have uh, Honorable Skin, skin, skin Man. Uh, oh, once again. <laughs> oh, that rehearsal. Skin Man, uh, 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 rep uh, representing Honorable Diale from Cocta and Human Settlements. And then we have um, from... Um, uh, social uh, sport, art, culture, and recreation. Honorable uh, Macheke. Honorable Macheke. Thank you. And then from uh, community safety, we have Honorable Ndlovana with us here tonight. Shall you wave to the members who, uh, of the public who might be looking at this video, Honorable Ndlovana? Can you hear us, Honorable Ndlovana? Thank you, thank you so much. All right, before we go into into the in, into the yes. uh, into the, thank you. Be, before I allow you to go in through your your presentations, each one of you, may I just ask? Um, yesterday, I was asked to ask you yes. um, just to tell us the difference between the legislature, Houting Provincial Legislature, and the Houting Provincial Government. For those members who may be here today who were not here when this was. Uh, briefly explained yesterday. Anybody who'd want uh, to tell us the difference between those two arms of government? There'll be any volunteer or Honorable uh, Majeke? Yeah, no, thank you very much, Hector, and uh, good evening to uh, those that are uh, watching us as well as those who are listening to all the four radio stations that you have uh, mentioned. <clears throat> Maybe to indicate uh, that, uh, that um, uh, this is something that we've always wanted to clarify uh, to the people of Gauteng in terms of our responsibilities. As In most cases, when we have public participation processes, people tend mm. to think that uh, the Gauteng Provincial Legislature and the Gauteng Provincial Government are one. We are two separate mm. uh, entities. Um, our responsibilities on legislative uh, uh, governance and uh, the Gauteng Provincial Government is responsible on, on the administration side uh, of the government. So our uh, primary objective is to make sure that we do oversight uh, over the different provincial departments. We also do lawmaking. Uh, we do public participation, as I have already mentioned, as well as we do cooperative uh, governance where IGR is more involved, where we liaise with our local counterpart as well as uh, our national uh, counterpart in terms of the legislative arm of the state. So in a nutshell, we are the legislative arm um, of the state when it relates to uh, government processes of uh, uh, things. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, while we are there, uh, shall we take seize this opportunity because it's something that uh, we had a conversation of of the record earlier on around uh, the difference between uh, you were saying the APPs and the five year uh, plans before I, I I give you a chance to present the budgets. Yes, thank you very much, um, Edda. Uh, I, I I just wanted to to clarify how we normally deal with um, the budgets um, because of um, every time when we start a new administration, uh, for an example, in 2019, we started the sixth uh, administration. Each and every okay. administration, it has its own priorities, obviously uh -huh. informed by the governing party uh, that is elected uh, during that time. Uh, at the start of each uh, administration, uh, then uh, different uh, provincial departments, they then uh, develop what we call five-year strategic plans, which okay. they will then present before uh, portfolio committees. Uh, for example, my portfolio committee on SREC, they will then come and present what we call the five-year strategic plan, which then outlines all the priorities uh, of the sixth administration, from uh -huh. the national government 
down to the provincial government as well as incorporating the local uh, sphere of government. Then from uh -huh. there on, every year uh, when we start the new financial year, we'll then invite uh, different uh, uh, departments, but in this instance, we'll then invite the Department of Sports to come and then present what we call their annual performance plan, uh, uh -huh. which will then uh, inform uh, budget allocations uh, that will be aligned to the five-year strategic plan that uh, they will have uh, presented when we started the six uh, uh, administration. In most cases, uh, sometimes it happens that during the course of the year, like what happened in uh, March 2020 with COVID-19, you will have, you'll have unplanned uh, programs that will then arise because of um, uh, the pandemic that happened, like your COVID-19. Then you'll have to readjust your five-year strategic plan uh, we also mm -hmm. allow the department to then come before uh, the portfolio committee to then uh, present if they have adjusted their five-year strategic plan. And then they will also uh, present uh, their um, annual performance plan that will then be aligned uh, to the budget before we then um, uh, allow them to um, uh, present the budget to the broader uh, uh, public. But over and above that, Delta, uh, uh, what then mm. happens, we also look uh, through their annual performance plans. We look whether they've incorporated the uh, uh, state of the nation address, which we call the SONA uh, mm -hmm. priorities. We then look at whether they've also incorporated the state of the province address by the Premier of Haute, Tate Makura, so that we then align um, uh, their budget uh, because of uh, those issues, we call them uh, the, 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 the uh, metrics uh, for, the, for the budget, where we look at this uh, particular priorities. Then we cascade it down to each and every department to then look at whether their annual performance plans speaks to uh, the GGT 2030, the Growing Houghton uh, Together 2030, that is aligned to the TMR uh, of our provincial uh, government that uh, comes from the fifth, the fifth administration into uh, the sixth administration. In an instance of our uh, department, for an example, our um, primary objective when it comes to the TMR is on social cohesion and nation building. Then we look at their APP, whether they speak to those two uh, primary objectives of the GGT uh, 2030, then we are able to then say to them, then you can be able to uh, align your budget based on all these particular processes. Thanks. Okay, thank you, uh, Honorable Macheke. And uh, you, uh, you've already touched on some of the things that you will be touching on, I suppose, uh, in your in your presentation uh, later. But shall we give uh, this moment, uh, Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on um, um, Social Development, Honorable RJ Kekana, to do your presentation? Once again, let me remind everyone that uh, this webinar is proudly sponsored by Houghton Provincial Legislature, and we look forward to an engaging webinar. And uh, we invite your comments, your questions. Please participate by posting here. You will allow, you will see that it allows you on those little bubbles there to post your questions. But let's allow our panelists first, the honourable members first, to present. And then as they are presenting, note your questions, and then you can be posting them so that I can be able to uh, read them to them at the end of their presentations. Honourable Kekana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and to the fellow members as well, uh, and the people of Houghton who might be streaming in and listening on, uh, on the radio. My name is Rufilo Kekana. I'm the chairperson for the Portfolio Committee for Social Development here in Houghton. And I think we, we, we are going to deal with the budget vote that were recently uh, presented uh, in the legislature. Uh -huh. So for me, uh, I'm just going to, to reflect on the analysis that was made by the portfolio committee. And I okay. think maybe just to just as, a, a, as an addition to what uh, Honorable Majeka would have said in explaining our role as the portfolio committee is that of doing oversight over the department, which is led by a member of the executive committee. In this case, for social development, it would be member uh, Marakani Musupi. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the department basically accounts to the portfolio committee. 
you know, we check their performance against the annual performance plan, as well as the targets that they have themselves would have set for themselves. Okay. We also do inspections on site at all the various uh, facilities under their guard, just mm -hmm. to check on compliance and functionality. We also do public participation like we do today, meaning that we have to invite and involve all the public uh, members of the public and various stakeholders so that they can understand the processes of the legislature, as well as we would uh, be involved in lawmaking, in enhancing and enriching uh, the existing policies and probably coming up with new policies, you know and mm -hmm. also uh, be involved in intergovernmental relations where we engage national government. And in our instance, we engage SASA as an entity of a national government, as well okay. as uh, Home Affairs as one of the stakeholders. And we also uh, engage local government, uh, the municipalities in this case. So in a nutshell, that, that, that's how we function. But Specifically for us as the uh, Portfolio Committee on Social Development, in our analysis of the budget, which is budget vote six of the Houghton Department of Social Development, we seek to, to examine the link between the department's objective with the resource allocation across the programs, as well as the linkages to the policy trends and the GPG strategic objectives, as uh, uh, Tatema Jago would have said. Yes. And then when scrutinizing this budget, the committee took into account the consideration of the legislative and the legal frameworks governing the financial management in uh, the public service, specifically the, the, the PFMA, mm -hmm. the Public Finance Management Act. Act. Mm. Yes. And the department votes should actually uh, represent a commitment to transparency and good governance in the interest of service delivery. As a result, the department conducts performance budgeting, which is a process that integrates strategic planning, financial planning, as well as financial management to ensure that there is effective and efficient service delivery. So in this case, uh, the Department of Social Development had been allocated an amount of 5 billion, 882 million, 786 thousand uh, for this financial year. Uh -huh. And then, of course, they would uh, use that money for the various programs that they have in the uh, in the department, which is administration. Uh, this time around, uh, for this financial year, administration received an allocation of seven hundred and forty-one million two hundred and thirty-one thousand, and social welfare services received an allocation of nine hundred and forty-five million two hundred and thirty-nine thousand. And program three, which is children and families, they received an allocation of two billion six hundred and eighteen million uh, six hundred and ninety-seven thousand, uh, which uh, of course was a, a bit increased from the previous financial year. It just increased by one percent. Mm -hmm. And then there's another program, which is restorative services, which received an allocation of seven hundred and eighty-three million eight hundred forty-one thousand, uh, which uh, was restorative services. Yeah, can you tell services. more about what what yeah what are restorative uh, restorative services? I saw that as well. Uh, can you just explain that a little bit? You know, uh, issues like uh, drug rehabilitation and reunification of families, uh, you know, people with their families. Issues of uh, homelessness, substance abuse, like I said, putting okay. them in homes. Yeah, just to try to restore the dignity of people in society. So those okay, would be the restorative services. Thank and you. then there's also a program called Development and Research, which received 749,950,000. And of course, uh, like I said, they also received an additional budget uh, of uh, 83.9,000,000 towards uh, uh, for, for homeless people. You would remember that during COVID, we had a situation where homeless people had to be taken care of. Mm. And the Department mm. of Social Development found themselves in the center of this uh, unfortunate situation. So currently there is a strategy that uh, the Department of Social Development together with the National Development uh, National uh, 
development, uh, Department of uh, Social Development, as well as uh, municipalities in terms of our intergovernmental uh, relations. They are trying to come up with a comprehensive strategy to address mm -hmm. the issue of homelessness, which I think is one of the lessons that uh, COVID-19 really uh, exposed us to, you know, to ensure that okay. at least this sector is also taken care of. And okay. we also, uh, yeah, welcomed the, um, there is an incentive, the, the, the public works program incentive grant, which was about 18.5 million, which has been uh, allocated to the department, as well as an additional 3.6 million, which uh, has been allocated for early uh, childhood development maintenance. So meaning for the maintenance of the buildings of the ECD centers. Okay. As well as about 1.3 million, which is allocated for 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 pro property auditors. So we we actually um, welcomed the, the the budget. There were increases in some instances and decreases in some instances, though they were very minute. And okay. we also realized that uh, during COVID, the department had to re readjust their budget to ensure that uh, they, to a certain extent, comply to, 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 to COVID-19 because they had to spend extra resources in order for them to ensure that the people of Gauteng at least are being taken care of uh, in terms of the COVID-19 uh, uh, protocols that they had to observe. You remember people were staying at home, so the department had to take an additional uh, burden to provide food for the people of Gauteng. So, uh, in short, the, 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 we, we, we also looked at the, we did oversight on the strategic priorities as well, just to check that the department is actually complying to, 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 to rebuilding of families, the communi communities, as well as the social relations and as well as to advocate for the integrated poverty eradication strategy. As you would be aware, many people in Gauteng fell into hunger. You know, they were, they were put into hunger because of this pandemic. As mm. well as to look mm. at the comprehensive social security system, violence against women and children and older persons, as well as the other uh, vulnerable groups the HIV and AIDS uh, groups, uh, mostly uh, which are led by, uh, you know, older persons. You find families that are led by older persons because of uh, this uh, other pandemic, the HIV uh, AIDS. You might find that the children have lost their parents due to these diseases and they are now uh, being taken care of by uh, these uh, elderly people. So there is a grant that they, they would receive or certain a basket of services that they would receive from social development. There's also youth development programs that the, the department would look at, accessibility of social welfare services, uh, people services to people with disabilities, as well as uh, the commitment to cooperative governance, and as well as uh, the effort to train and try to skill and reskill, especially women who are receiving grants, because the aim of the department is to ensure that they get those women who are receiving grants to exit the grant system so that they can be able to, to do things for themselves. They can be skilled and they can be employed so that they are brought back into the mainstream of the economy. So those, those are the kinds of uh, progress processes or programs that the department embarks on. So as the portfolio committee, we look very closely to check if the budget is indeed spent where it is needed, just okay. to put it in simple terms, you know. So our oversight would... We, we, we would want to check from the five billion that you've been given the allocation to all the different programs of the department are you really spending this money where it's supposed to be spent does the people of Gauteng feel the impact of this budget and that that's okay. really is our focus as the portfolio committee to ensure that that money goes where it's supposed to go 
Honorable Rifile Kekana, thank you so much for that um, uh, presentation. And you'll bear with us, uh, the other um, the chairpersons, uh, in that we'll give you also enough time to be able to go through uh, your budget. But before I let you go and wait for questions from the floor or from the audience, uh, yesterday during the presentation by... Um, Honorable Kanyele, there was uh, the issue of EPWP came out strongly uh, with it's one that received a lot of questions. Um, the 18.5 million, I'm happy, you know, that's the one that's going to be spent in this 2021-2022 uh, uh, budget. But then that, it, it seems as if people felt as if there's, there are problems with um, EPWP problems uh, program. Did you pick that up? And then what are the problems in your opinion as an oversight committee that you picked up around that? Why is it that there were so many questions around that yesterday? I wondered. Yeah, the thing is the EP, EPWP program is a program that is uh, being rolled out by various spheres of government. So yes. I wouldn't know if these uh, people who asked questions had a problem with the EPWP program of the department or of the provincial government or in the municipality or even national. But there is a grant that is allocated for EPWP and it's up to the department as to how they dispense it, how they employ these uh, young people into this program so that at least they can put bread on the table. So I, I wouldn't uh, specifically be able to answer where the problem is, but the, 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 the fact of the matter is there is a grant that the, all the departments receive as well as the, the municipality, and it's up to them to spend that money efficiently to the right beneficiaries. All right. No, thank thank you, you so much. Um, if time permits, later on, we'll let you go into other things that uh, we may have left out, the issues around uh, uh, the MDG, Millennium um, Development Goals and all these sort of, sort of things. But I, I understand we have uh, limited time and you, you would spend the whole hour. If We were to allow you to go through everything. And at this point, we go to the. Uh, are you ready, Honorable CNS Nyaman, or should we go to the next chairperson? No, I'm ready. I, I lost you there for a minute, but I am ready. Oh, my apologies. I think the issue was on my side. I was asking Sean yesterday if there's a way to block calls, more like when you are on a flight, you know, flight mode, but still remain online. Apparently, there's no technology like that because sometimes some people don't know that I'm on this webinar and then they call and then that disrupts the network. My apologies about that. Okay, uh, uh, you are on the floor now, Honorable uh, Schneerman. No, thank you very much and, and a very good evening to the viewers and to the listeners. Um, my name is Greg Schneeman and I'm standing in for the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on COCTA and Human Settlements. That's uh, Ms. Kiriboni Diali, who is not well. And may I take this opportunity also to wish her a speedy recovery. Uh, but as I say, I'm standing in for her. Uh, okay. Let me just firstly indicate that... Uh, the department that we are responsible for overseeing is the Department of COCTA and Human Settlements. It's two separate departments. Uh, one is COCTA, one is Human Settlements, but both okay. of those fall under one MEC. And the MEC for COCTA and Human Settlements in Gauteng is MEC Lebohang Maile. Um, so what I'm going to do is let me start firstly with COCTA. Um, and that's COCTA is basically, COCTA in, in full is cooperative governance and traditional affairs. And uh, COCTA's role in Gauteng is to provide support uh, and also do oversight in terms of the municipalities in Gauteng. So COCTA as a department doesn't actually deliver services. It doesn't collect refuse. It doesn't build municipal roads, etc. It provides support. Okay. The municipalities themselves are responsible for service delivery uh, in their municipalities. So I thought. And I what should kind just of what kind? 
Thank you. And what kind of support is that, or is that what's coming in okay. the presentation? No, that's what I'm coming. That's what I'm coming to now. Thank so you. Firstly, just to indicate that the that Cocta in Gauteng has got a budget for this year of 611 million rand. Um, and that uh, 611 million rand is divided up amongst four programs, uh, which it has. And those four programs, firstly, are administration, uh, mm -hmm. which has a budget of 176 million rand. Uh, program two, which is focusing on local governance, has a budget of 288 million rand. And then uh, program three, uh, let me, sorry, let me just get my pages. I hope and there it is. My apologies for that. Um, no problem. Program three, which is also referred to as development and planning, has a budget of 152 million rand. And then the final program, uh, which is focusing on traditional institutional development, that has a budget of 17 million rand. So, so that's, that's, that's the structure, that's the budget, and then the, the breakdown per program. So what I thought, what I just want to do is give a bit of an indication of the type of support that mm -hmm. uh, COCTA provides to municipalities. But before I do that, I just want to indicate that uh, when uh, MEC Maile came into office, um, a, a committee of inquiry was established, uh, led by Professor Trevor Fowler, and that committee of inquiry uh, has done extensive work in analysing. The, the various municipalities that we have in Gauteng, yeah. mm. um, looking at how they function, looking at where the shortcomings, etc. And they've come out with a very comprehensive report. And that, that report has come out with various findings and recommendations. And it's probably the first time that we've seen a report of that nature uh, that has been put together. And uh, the work that that uh, commission uh, has done will enable the department and probably will also enable the portfolio committee to zoom in onto particular areas uh, where municipalities need to improve. But I sure thought I, so that is a major tool that the department will be using. Uh, those findings were released uh, a couple of months ago and will be used by the Department of Cocteau and Gauteng to really zoom in onto critical areas where the municipalities need to uh, improve on in terms of performance. And some of those areas um, mm. where the department will be focusing and providing support is in areas of financial management uh, to assist municipalities to develop the skills uh, that they have and to ensure that they can improve in their financial management, issues of planning, uh, proper planning, uh, and being able to, to plan effectively. Um, also, to assist uh, municipalities that are in serious distress. And there are a couple of municipalities that are going to be a focus uh, that the department is focusing on. Uh, City Bank District Municipality, West Rand District, District Municipality in particular, will be getting a lot of, a lot of attention uh, from the department. Um, there's also issues and areas of uh, um, unauthorized expenditure, irregular, irregular expenditure, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. So those are areas as well where the department would be focusing in. And they will also be roping in experts in particular fields that would be able to help uh, the municipalities. Also just to indicate that the department itself has put together uh, teams uh, in each region. So we have three metros. Uh, metropolitan mm -hmm. municipalities in, in Gauteng, and we have two district municipalities with local municipalities under each of those. And each of those has specific teams that are tasked from the department together with technical and e experts to assist municipalities in various areas to help them improve their over, overall performance. Uh, that is and in uh, terms think, of... Yeah, yeah as, as, just sorry for interruption. And one of the things that I picked up there was the issue around skills. 
uh, in that I think that report was showing that um, there's a problem of skills. And I was thinking about something that's known or phrased as CADA development, where you find that uh, a certain comrade would be put into a position, but they lack the skills. And I'm so happy that this report also highlighted that. And I think it was also flowing from the Auditor General's report uh, that was made public that uh, the whole of South Africa must have seen recently about the state of the municipalities. And I'm so happy that uh, you have touched on that. Sorry about that, but I just had to bring that, uh, that the issue of skills uh, also into this. Thank you so much. No, it's fine. But in terms of the area of skills, if I can indicate, it's also, it's also identifying where do uh, the skills of officials and certain officials need to be improved identifying particular courses that they can go in so that they can capaci capacitate themselves, enabling them to perform their functions better. Um, okay. So uh, that is in term, brief in terms of COCTA. Let me turn over to human settlements, if I may. Um, yes, please, you may. No, thank you very much. Firstly, just to indicate that uh, uh, the budget of human settlements, it, it's broken down into two, uh, two areas. Firstly, there's an allocation that, uh, yeah, yeah, so that the overall budget for human settlements for this year is 5.9 billion rand that is allocated okay. to the department. And that's broken down into two separate amounts. So the first amount that uh, makes up that 5.9 billion is an amount of 4.9 billion, which is what we call the Human Settlements Development Conditional Grant, or HSDCG. And the second amount is an amount of 969 million uh, rand, which is part of the equitable share allocation. Um, and then obviously we break it down into the, into the programs. And uh, so if I go, I'm just trying to get my pages here. There are four programs in the Department of Human Settlements. Uh, okay. The first program is dealing with administration. Their budget for this okay. year is 533 million rand. Uh, program two, which deals and focuses on an area called housing needs, planning and research, uh, has a budget of 21 million rand. Program three, which is one of the major programs of the department, and that is uh, focusing on housing development, has a budget of 5.1 billion rand. And program four uh, focuses on housing asset management and property management, and that has a budget of 207 million rand. Um, so that's the breakdown of the budget. And just to say that uh, some of the critical areas that the Department of Human Settlements, their programs focus on, include the issues of urban renewal programs, mega, uh -huh. mega developments, issues of title deeds, uh, issues of hospital redevelopment, um, and uh, also support to youth, women, and persons with disabilities. It's a key area that they're supposed to be focusing on, on, on as well. And then there's a new program, a new particular program of the department that's coming in and, and should be rolled out fairly soon. And that's the mm -hmm. Rapid Land Release Program, a major, major program of provincial government as well. Um, I think I've touched on some of the key areas uh, that the department is meant to be focusing on. Um, in terms of oversight, just to indicate that the Portfolio okay. Committee um, places a big importance on terms of oversight, and uh, that oversight is conducted a number of various ways. So in terms of municipalities, we, we interact obviously on the department in terms of their performance and whether they're meeting their targets and whether they're doing what they've told us that they're going to be doing. But in this coming year and in the next uh, probably month or two, the Portfolio Committee will be having engagements with all the municipalities in Khartoum. Um, mm -hmm. So rather than just to get an analysis and get a report and update from the department, we've decided as a Portfolio Committee under the leadership of the chairperson uh, to actually engage directly with the municipalities to get a real proper understanding of, of where they stand, what are they doing, how are they planning to improve, etc. cetera. Um, we also do on-site visits uh, we also interact with, with stakeholders where we can, obviously, under the conditions that we're in with the COVID-19 pandemic. It has changed things a little bit, but that doesn't in any way diminish our responsibility to perform oversight both over the department and also to interact with the municipalities. And in terms of human settlements, again, it would be 
interacting a lot with the department to ensure that it's meeting its targets, uh, to ensure that the budget is being spent effectively and efficiently, but also to conduct oversight visits where we actually go on the ground to go and assess what's happening in a project. Is what the department telling us actually happening on the ground? Uh, so that's, that's, that's the kind of work that we do. And I think, uh, let me stop there. I think I've taken okay. up enough time and I hope that gives you an understanding uh, of, the, of the portfolio committee, the portfolio that it's overseeing, and in a sense, the budget of the department and its priorities as well. Thank you very much. Very clear. And then the, 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 if you've covered that, please forgive me, but the issue around COVID and how it's impacting, especially now we are on lockdown level four for the next uh, two weeks. And then if there are programs that are running right now, how is that um, uh, uh, impacting on the ability of the department to be able to do what it does? And as a, a committee, do you also leave space uh, 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 for that delay that might be caused by this uh, COVID-19 lockdown? No, you're quite right. I mean, if we look, if we go back to, to last year, um, mm. let's be very frank, the, the lockdown and, 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 and the, the, the COVID-19 pandemic mm. and the uh, tragic disruption to lives uh, and, to, and to the economy, et cetera, did have an impact uh, in some senses on, on terms of uh, delivery. If I talk about human settlements, it probably had an impact on the department being able to deliver because remember for a period of time uh, there was no construction taking place there was no work on the mm. ground able to take place uh, and that would have had an impact um, it also had a major impact on municipalities particularly in terms of the collection of revenue and income mm. so mm. there were a lot of people uh, for, for various reasons people may have been retrenched salaries may have been cut that have not been able to pay for services in the manner that they would normally be able to pay. So it's also left uh, municipalities in, 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 in dire straits in terms of their finances. Um, so it has had an impact. Um, and yes, when the department analyzed uh, and has analyzed the last financial year, those are things that we would have looked at and, and understood. However, we, we are focusing very much on the performance of both departments, that we can try and regain where possible lost ground, um, and that uh, we can move forward as speedily as possible. But yes, it has had an impact. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and we can only hope and trust and pray uh, that we get to a situation where we can return to a sense of normality and to see delivery move back to where it should, should be taking place in terms of both departments. I hope that answers the question. That does. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Gregory uh, Skinman. Uh, um, in, in the place of uh, Honorable KP Diale, who couldn't be with us today, um, the, talking about COCTA and human uh, settlements. Thank you so much for that. Uh, this is the budget votes webinar session where there's a four in this series we started yesterday we're continuing until thursday and we just want to say once again thank you to Houghton provincial government for sponsoring these uh, uh, seminars and uh, i think this speaks to uh, part of their mandate of public participation that uh, now that the uh, the votes are here the budgets are here let the public get to know what is what what's in those budgets and we already have a few questions. Uh, I can see you, Stembiso, Musito, Zamatele. I'm not ignoring you. Let us let um, uh, the chairpersons pre uh, present first. Uh, Donald Kuketung, Komonde, I see you all. Sipongwala, uh, Stembiso, I see you all, guys. Uh, I will be coming to you shortly. Let us uh, allow at this point, um, chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on Community Safety. That's Honorable Ndlovana to go through her presentation. As I already highlighted earlier on, I looked at this figure of 962.6 million. And I thought with the kind of problems we have in the problems uh, in the province of crime, I thought Whoo, this amount maybe should have been billions as well. But let's just get to hear your uh, presentation and understand why this amount and what is it to be used for? How to, what, what, was, what was the process and what other programs? Please help us. Okay, thank you, Hector. Uh, good evening, uh, viewers, and also the 
listeners in the different radio station. My name is Alfina Ndrovana, the chairperson of community safety in the Gauteng Provincial Legislature. Uh, I will be presenting on the community safety program in terms of the reflection of the analysis of the committee. But before I can present the reflection and the analysis, allow me uh, to explain that in the portfolio committee of the community safety, which is led, the department is led by the MEC, Faith Mazibugo. Mm -hmm. the, the portfolio, portfolio committee analyzes the budget allocation, which you, which you have already said that you were asking yourself, that is this amount sufficient uh, in line with the APP and also in line with the targets in terms of the programs, the three programs which the department are doing. And also, as the portfolio committee, we are doing unannounced visit in the facilities. I identify when the stats, crime stats were presented to the community of, of Gauteng. We identify those that are the top three or top 12, so that we go and check what are the challenges in terms of increasing in the number of crime or increasing in the number of hijack. And also, uh -huh. the viewers, we also receive complaints regularly as the portfolio committee in terms of the challenges which are affecting community on issues related to our law enforcement agencies. Then we do discuss them and respond accordingly to the different to that particular community member. Allow me to present the budget of the community safety of the 21-2022 financial year, which is vote 10. The department have received a total allocation of 962.3 million, which is an increase of 31.6 million, which is only 3% increase. And that allocation is based on the three programs. The first program is administration. It has received 169.6 million in the current year, which marked a decrease of 10.3 million. Then program two, which is a provincial secretariat, which is the major program in uh -huh. community safety, received 241 million which it was a decrease by 13 million of 6%. Program three, which is traffic management, received 551.6 million, an increase by 54.7 million, which is 11%. Mm -hmm. Then from this budget, the department Reprioritize 62.9 million for the implementation of the gender-based response plan. I think you remember in the SOPA of 2019, uh, the premier highlighted that there is a need, even in the SOPA of last year, that there is a need that as, a, as, as, as the province, we need to have a response plan in terms of the gender-based violence. Uh -huh. Then what happened last year with regard to this? The money of last year, which was allocated, it has provided for the appointment of the gender-based violence brigades. Uh -huh. And also a training was done on those gender-based uh, brigades and also on the police officers in terms of taking statements on the victims. Huh? So the reprioritization, re it is in line to take the matters further. Then again, the 69.5 million was allocated to strengthen police oversight community mobilization. 
against the crime and drug abuse, as well as educating the community on the gender-based violence. 27.1 million was provided for procurement on the high performance vehicles and four mobile police stations for the high crime areas. And there was a reprioritization of funds for the appointment of 133 additional traffic officers to improve traffic law enforcement. And the 55.8 million has been set aside for the establishment of the state of art, integrated command and central center, which will be integrating the CCTV so that we have a coordinated uh, coordination in all efforts. And also in the same very same budget, a reverse of the green doors is in the past. They were not able to fulfill this function. Therefore, it will accommodate an extra 36 green doors. Then what are the impact? Uh, before you go the to the impact, uh, sorry, uh, Honorable Alfina, uh, green doors yes. for those members of the public who might be wondering what are the green doors. Do you want to explain that a little bit, please? Yes, the green doors are the one, the houses which we are using for the survivors of the gender-based violence. Usually a community can, can use one of their houses for the use of the survivors of the gender-based violence so that they should not go to the police stations. They can okay. be used, go to the areas which are next to them. Is it okay, clear? Thank you. Very clear. Thank you. Yeah. Then the impact of the COVID-19 to the budget from last year, uh -huh. it has an impact, a major one, because the department was unable to fill the vacant post due to the national lockdown. The second program which was affected was program two, on the provincial secretariat. The safety promotion sub-program was not done due to the reason that uh, the police officers were unable to go to schools to do an unannounced research search on the school so that to check whether drugs are still used in school or not. Okay. Then the last one, the last one was the one of the green doors because community members were not allowing anyone to come and visit their homes so that they can be able to train them on how to use the green doors. Really, to be honest, the budget allocation of the community safety, taking into consideration the increase of the population of yes. Gauteng and also mm. the increase of the informal settlement and the increase of the crime rate in Gauteng, that budget is insufficient. I thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you admitted that because it was my feeling just as I read that report earlier on. And also thank you for highlighting the impact of COVID-19 because that was my biggest question uh, for you. And I'm worried about that issue of filling vacant posts as, uh, you know, as a member of the public, I would ask myself, how is that impacting on service delivery when you have a lot of vacant posts? And if this 2021 2022 budget um, somehow has a way of uh, still accommodating and making sure that those posts are filled as soon as possible or as soon as COVID allows. All right, uh, Councillor uh, William Macheke, I put you last because uh, you had a lot to say at the beginning. So I thought, <laughs> let, let me put you last so that uh, uh, we could be able to, uh, we, we could hear other members, uh, the other chairpersons. Uh, Councillor uh, 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 
Kekana. Uh, I'm trying to inspire Kalina uh, Erifile. Um, while we're listening to this uh, next presentation, please prepare. Uh, somebody's asking this question, and I think it's one of those things that we highlighted at the beginning, that some of the questions might not have to do with how thing legislature per se, because people sometimes don't know how to differentiate between GPL and GPG. So, for example, this question, if it's something that falls within what you guys do in your task of uh, lawmaking, oversight, and um, uh, corporate uh, corporate governance and uh, public participation. He says, um, Father's Mangaliso Center was shut down sometime last year. What has transpired since the findings of the maladministration in the center? Have that in your mind, uh, as I now call um, forward Honorable William Majeke. Uh, armed with a budget of one billion, uh, or is it a million? Oh my goodness, I think it's just a million. I thought it's a billion. I expected a, a billion for sport, sport, art, culture, and recreation. Um, the spotlight is on you now, sir. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> no, thank you very much, uh, uh, Hector. And once again, uh, uh, good evening to uh, viewers at uh, home as well as listeners in the four radio stations. Maybe before I proceed again, uh, at, uh, yes, allow me to send our deepest uh, condolences to the More Febeli, who was one of our members of the committee who unfortunately uh, passed away uh, last week Friday. Uh, condolences to the More Febeli, to the the A caucus, as well as the people of Gauteng, we've lost a very dedicated member of the committee. I am the chairperson of sports uh, in Gauteng, responsible for oversight over the Department of Sports, led by uh, the young, energetic Emi Simbali Sope. Um, our budget vote is about 12. I will not necessarily go deeper into how uh, my colleagues would have presented because some of the issues <clears throat> are occurrence in terms of our responsibilities. But uh, just to clarify, uh, to indicate that our budget is not in millions, it's in in a billion. Our oh, okay. I, I misread it. Uh, my apologies. Yes, <laughs> our, our allocated budget, even though it's not enough, I must say, we are one of the department that I personally feel that we are underfunded. It's a, it's an engagement that we have raised with the MEC. We've also have, uh, I asked her to lobby the minister uh, in terms of the conditional grants that we receive from the national department to increase uh, some of the conditional grant, taking into consideration the immigration into Gauteng, because Gauteng is the economic hub uh, mm. of uh, South Africa. And uh, everyone looks into Gauteng, especially when it relates to the creative industries, which I will uh, present to indicate uh, how uh, the, uh, the budget will have been um, allocated. We are responsible for four programs as a department. Mm. Uh, we are uh, responsible for uh, administration, which uh, received an allocation of around 165.8 million out of the 1 billion 66 million, uh, which is program one. And in terms of program two, which is uh, cultural uh, affairs, which also incorporates an NPO. Um, uh, I know that uh, some people will think uh, that I'm supposed to see an entity, but because of its legal standing uh, with the Auditor General, uh, we have decided as a portfolio committee that for now, uh, the Houghton Film Commission uh, will uh, see it as an NPO up until its legal standing would have been clarified by ourselves with the engagement with the provincial uh, treasury. They have uh, mm -hmm. received an allocation of an amount of around uh, 38 million, which is a, is a slight decrease from the 39 million that they received in the previous uh, financial year. Uh, um, Houghton uh, Film Commission is incorporated into cultural affairs. Then we've got uh, library uh, services and archival services, which is program three, uh, which uh, it uh, received an amount of around 320 billion. Uh, but majority of that um, allocation 
it's through the conditional grant that we receive from uh, the National Department of uh, uh, Arts and Culture in terms of uh, library services. Because as uh, people might be aware, uh, library services uh, is the legislative uh, mandate of uh, the province. But we then signed uh, what we call MOUs with uh, local uh, municipalities to run uh, that uh, responsibility of, of on behalf of the Houghton province. So uh, that uh, uh, program uh, that and, and, and its sub programs received an amount of around 320 million. And lastly, is the sport and recreation, which received an amount of around 347 uh, million, uh, which is uh, a slight decrease as well uh, compared to the previous financial year. If we then compare the allocations uh, from the previous financial year, there is a slight increase uh, from the allocated uh, budget from the previous uh, financial year. But I must indicate that, uh, that um, our department was one of the most affected uh, department uh, in terms of reprioritization when it came to uh, 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 dealing with COVID-19. Uh, in the previous financial year, an amount of around 140 something million was taken from our allocated budget to respond to uh, COVID-19, which was an unplanned pandemic that happened uh, in March uh, when the president would have uh, pronounced on the lockdown uh, that we are currently also uh, under, uh, which also have could have uh, affected a great deal. You know, yesterday I was uh, um, reading through uh, social media and I saw a posting from Ndate Don Laka who had indicated that he lost uh, two of his uh, 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 band members. Um, through his uh, posting, I saw something that really touched me because he then indicated that the current lockdown is, is the nail uh, in the coffin in terms of the creative industries. And I tend to agree with him he, he, in a way, because of if you have you could have looked between March the 2020 up until around uh, August uh, 2020, the creative industry there, there was absolutely nothing happening within that particular sector. Uh, now, because of the increasing number of COVID-19 infections, uh, the president had uh, correctly so uh, to put us under uh, level four, which also now affects the creative. Uh, industries. Over and above that, we uh, tried as a portfolio committee together with the MEC to allocate uh, relief funding to our artists as well as uh, sports uh, people just to assist them in terms of responding to the challenges that they would have been faced. Even though they are much uh -huh. honorable. Been honorable William Macheke, we are, we are, yeah, the quality of your. Uh, um, uh, uh, of your streaming uh, is being affected right now. Even your picture starting to kind of freeze and the voice is crackling a little bit. The last portions, we struggled, all of us, to really make sure that we hear you, we could hear you talking about Saka and how this has impacted on his two members of his band, two members, and also how the industry is deeply affected. This new level four, it's actually... It's, most artists are saying like it's like a nail in their coffin to say now this will off and then i think you are coming to a very important portion which i i suppose a lot of people were waiting to hear about the social relief support which we saw in the media about how the artists were saying that how do you select um some uh, uh mem the, or, or some of their members who gets it who doesn't get it with some people being accused of getting more and i know this also impacts on the national arts and culture with some people who are saying that, that the minister himself uh, must resign so i don't know whether there will be a certain i don't know whether you want to move because you've been in the same place throughout um is there anything that you can move or juggle or, or a little bit so that the quality can improve. Let's try uh, by, because this is a very important one that you are about to go into, because it's a cry out there with the artists saying that we are starving, we are losing our houses and our townhouses, we're losing our cars. So we need to hear this one clearly. So try again, as, as I think, uh, let's see if it will work this time around. Uh, social relief support, what's happening there in the grants? 
I, I also struggle to, to hear you a bit there. I don't know if I'm audible enough. If I can get an indication. Um, I don't know. Do other members of the panel, uh, uh, as well as the public, are you able to hear him? It's still crackling a little bit. It looks like there's a problem with the quality of the network. I don't know whether that could be that. I'm not, a, I'm not so technical, but it could be the network itself because it's crackling a little bit. Um, when you speak, it cuts, you know, so, somehow. Okay, let's try. Let's go through this. And then if it's really terrible, we'll have to pause you. And uh, I don't know what kind of support can... Um, uh, um, uh, Oh my God! Is it? Did I say Jason? Not Jason. Oh my God! I just forgot his name. Uh, what what kind of support he can help us behind the scenes? I'm not so sure if we can be able to do that. But in the meantime, just try again uh, to talk about that because you were on social relief support, and I didn't. I wanted us to really hear that clearly. Let's try again. Yeah, you know, I I also struggle to hear you, Hector. I don't know whether it's uh, my connection, but I, I looked at my connectivities. It's okay. I don't know whether I'm audible enough now. Can okay, let me now? just try this. Uh, uh, Honorable uh, Rifilo Kekana, can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can. You can I hear can me clearly? Hear you. Okay. I can also hear William, yes. Can you hear me, Honorable you can, uh, Kekana? Oh, I can hear William. Yes. Okay, yes. very clearly. Very clearly, yes. Okay, maybe the problem could be on my side. If if uh, if you, uh, you can hear him, let me also assume that every other person can hear him very clearly. Uh, let's just test with uh, Honorable Alfina Glovana. Can you hear him clearly? I can hear you clearly. I can hear you. Uh, oh, you can hear me clearly because I can hear yeah, you very yeah, clearly. You yeah. can hear me clearly. Yes, you are fading now? a little bit. Okay, uh, I'm trying to increase because the volume is very high on my side. I'm not so sure if uh, Honorable William Acheke. Let's try it again because it looks like uh, some members can hear you. Honorable um, uh, uh, Gregory Nieman, can you hear him clearly? Can you hear me clearly as well? We need to I test this quality so that our members of uh, the public as well as the listeners on um, Kasi, on, on the different radio stations are able to uh, hear us. I don't know what happened to the quality of my presentation of my network as I was going because I've just been on the same in the same position. Uh, me, the, the, the streamers or the listeners of Paley FM, Eldos FM, Teta FM, Rainbow FM, I hope they can hear us uh, clearly. So, Honorable William uh, Macheke, um, sorry I interrupted you there because of the, those issues of uh, connectivity. Uh, I'm a bit concerned about those in terms of uh, uh, this um, uh, broadcast going, continuing clearly. But please, that social relief support, just go through. Um, as long as people can hear you, I will, uh, I'm not so sure what is it that I should do on my side. Yeah, no offense, Hector. I, I, I was indicating in terms of the relief funding um, that we have made available through an engagement that we had with um, the MEC um, that we made around uh, 28 million available for relief funding for both uh, art and culture as well as uh, uh, sports. I know that um, it might not sound enough but there is also the National uh, Relief Fund that could have uh, also been made available by the National uh, the Department. So I was re-emphasizing uh, the point that our uh, sector, especially the creative industries, are one of the sectors that will have been uh, affected by the lockdown. And um, the current lockdown does not necessarily assist the situation, but we do understand mm. that the president had no any other option but to really take us to a let level four which will also affect more uh, of our creative uh, industries we will have an engagement moving forward with MEC to see if we'll be able uh, to make any other means to assist our struggling artists the last issue that i wanted to raise is in relation to the infrastructure development i know it's one area that is very close to our people in Gauteng, especially the people of mamilo uh, with regard to the HMPJ uh, stadium, uh, which is a, uh -huh. a very hot potato and an outstanding 
a matter uh, that we, uh, as a, a portfolio committee uh, and with the department uh, together with the premier's office we've been engaging on as well as the uh, operation Mabali uh, in uh, Westbury which is an, an outstanding uh, project uh, of the department together with the uh, memorial sites um, that we have built that are currently not fully some of them are not fully functional like your um, women's heritage living monument in, in Twani, uh, which we have made an allocation of around 34 million to really uh, uh, finalize the operationalization of that uh, living uh, monument uh, in terms of the heritage uh, component as well as the Bipatum monument and the Kahiso monument which are outstanding but what i know is very close to the people of Houten is with regard to the combi courts uh, that are outstanding uh, we have made a commitment through uh, the premier uh, state of the province address uh, that within this uh, particular uh, term will build around uh, 40 uh, combi courts uh, around uh, Houten and uh, we are still committed uh, uh, as a portfolio committee to making sure uh, that the, the department delivers on those particular uh, combi courts and lastly just uh, as a closing remark is to indicate that um, in the previous term as a portfolio committee we've been uh, doing a, a oversight visits to um, a program uh, three which is a, a library services and, and and this time around in the next term we'll be focusing on uh, sports and recreation like this uh, outstanding infrastructure projects that i could have uh, spoken to uh, for an example um, the issue that relates to the Bofan Reunion Stadium in uh, Krugerstorp, uh, uh, Mohali City. Uh, those are our focus areas mm -hmm. for the next term in making sure that those outstanding infrastructure projects, uh, we, are, we, we then zoom into them and we look into them that uh, finally they can be operational for the people of Hawaii to enjoy those particular infrastructure projects. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable William Majeke, and uh, thanks to all the chairpersons of the different portfolios for your presentations. Now we go to the questions that are already here, uh, that I'm seeing here. But uh, before I move away from you completely, Honorable Majeke, you know, in the report, there was, the, you know, there's a heartbreaking issue around housing social cohesion um, uh, carnival, which um, saw the loss of jobs, 3,550. I thought that was just too much, it, although they were temporary jobs, but we know how much how much of a difference uh, those uh, can make. And uh, I don't know if the, uh, that the social relief support somehow also would reach to the, that number of people who have lost their jobs, even though they were te uh, temporary. But anyway, um, we're going to start with you, Councillor Rifilwe Kekana, because I've you your question by now you must have thought about it but before i allow you to answer councillor gregory schneeman the place to fast track the helena wales housing project in talton because the project can at least ease the housing backlog in the rural wards of Mohale City. This is from Donald Koketo Nkomonde. Another one for you. Can the Department of Human Settlement intervene in the ongoing protest at oils, basically about service delivery? Those people okay, he read it in Setswana here. So uh, they are human too. Electrification of Orient is really a necessity. That's what somebody is saying here. Uh, and then, Councillor William, they even gave me your middle name on this one, Matafing Macheke, uh, the chairperson of SRAC in Houting. Can your department please prioritize sport facilities in rural areas of Mohali City in the West Rent, as well as a serious lack of facilities? Uh, while we will be having Councillor Refilio answer, you will be preparing yourself around that. Um, Let's see, yeah, those are the three missions that I have so far. So shall we go into all those? And for those watching and uh, worried, the recording of this webinar will be available afterwards. Keep an eye on your email. Okay, Councillor Rifilo Gagana. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you, you seem to be uh, very familiar with working with councillors. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, but <laughs> Oh honorable. my God, honorable. My, my apologies. <laughs> I work with counselors a lot, it's true. <laughs> yeah. The fathers, Bangalisu, um, Katra Youth Care Center is situated in Soshanguve. And indeed, as the portfolio committee, we once visited the, the site, the establishment in Soshanguve. And we did find that there were some structural problems which actually dominated the reason for our visit there. There were structural mm -hmm. at the facility, at part of, of the, the facility, not the whole facility was affected. So we as a portfolio committee uh, recommended for the closure of that part that was uh, structurally unsuitable. Okay. But for, at the same period, the department had also recognize that there are some structural challenges uh, there and they had also actually made a determination and actually decided that they are going to close the facility so on that we agreed with the department that they should temporarily close the, the facility so that they can deal with the structural issues so currently the, the technical team is busy doing assessments at the center and i'm sure when they are done they will be able to uh, advise on the way forward because uh, there is, they, they've also established that uh, there is also a high level of water in the area where the center mm. is built. Okay. So perhaps their study might have to be more extensive than they had initially envisaged. But it's something that uh, mm. is at the core of uh, our you know, discovery and as the portfolio committee, we really want to see this uh, facility being restored so that the children that were housed there can be able to be uh, returned back. But currently, some of the children who were there have since been moved to other centers so that uh, okay. they can continue to, to receive the necessary services that they received at Father's Mangalisham Kajo. Thank you very much. I hope I, I responded to the question adequately. I hope Zamatele is happy because she's the one who asked that, uh, Honorable uh, Rifilwe Kekana. Uh, uh, Honorable, um, where do we go now? Uh, Honorable Gregory Schneemann, uh, the two issues that um, I read earlier on, I saw you were taking notes around that. Are you ready to respond to Robert Nkomonde and Donald Koketo Nkomonde? I don't know if these are brothers or two, same person. Uh -huh. No, thanks very much, uh, Hector. Uh, firstly, let me just say that um, uh, the two questions uh, relate to areas also in the uh, parliamentary constituency in which I've been deployed mm. to work, and that is in Mahali City. And Mahali mm -hmm. City, the municipal area, and that's the area I work in as an MPL, uh, covers Tarleton and the area called Orient Hills. Uh, but let me start mm. with the, I think it's the Helena Wheels project. I think that's what you said. The fast tracking of it, it's based in Tarleton. Personally, I'm, I'm not aware of that project, so I wouldn't want to try and give answers that uh, I can't give. Uh, what I can undertake to do, if you're able to give me the details uh, offline or after this, I will undertake uh, to establish, um, whether that's a provincial or, or, or a municipal project, uh, and to find out what's happening. And then we can get back to uh, the 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 listener viewer who's who's posed the question. If we can get his 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 or her contact details, we would certainly go back to them uh, with, okay. with answers on that. On in terms of Orient on Orient Hills, no, yes. that's the question on the Helena Wheels project in Tolton. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. So I need to get more information about that, and we'll find out. And if we can get the contact details, we'll be able to go back directly to them and, and give them an update on, on that particular project. In terms of the Orient Hills matter, I am aware of it. Uh, it's also been raised in the portfolio committee as well. Uh, and I can also just say, if I can, let me just go move away a bit from the portfolio committee, but as a constituency office and where I work, 
I'm deployed to work. We've been engaging with the municipality on this particular matter. And it's correct uh, what the person raises, that the critical area that the community are raising is the electrification of the area. Um, I'm not at liberty to yeah, uh, indicate what are some of the developments. I think that's something that the municipality will be reporting back to the community on. Um, so I don't want to delve into that. Um, but okay. we've been raising this matter. It's come before the Portfolio Committee. Uh, the MEC uh, for Human Settlements is aware of this matter. Um, and uh, all I can say is that uh, there have been extensive uh, uh, interactions uh, with Eskom because that particular area uh, it's, it falls under the responsibility of Eskom. So just to explain, um, some areas would fall under a municipality in terms of jurisdiction for electrification, and other areas would fall under Eskom. And in terms of the Orient Hills area, that particular area falls under Eskom. So I know for a fact okay. that the municipality has been engaging uh, extensively with Eskom. Um, and... Uh, but what I do want to say on this matter, uh, and that is that uh, the community have closed off a road. It's a provincial road that runs past Orient Hills. That road has been closed. It's been blocked by the community, and they refuse to unblock it. Now, oh. I want to firstly say that uh, the issues that they are raising are taken very seriously. The municipality is taking it very seriously. It's engaging with Eskom on this matter. It's engaging together with the Department of Cocta. But what one would, would want to appeal is to the community in that area to, 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 to allow uh, government to get that road up and running again. There is major traffic that has to travel to one of our neighboring countries. And for as long as that road remains blocked, it's having a major impact on, on critical cargoes and supplies that are supposed to reach that neighboring country. I raise this not at all uh, discounting the, 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 the concern of the community around electrification. So I'm not in any way trying to diminish that. Uh, the, the matter they're raising is important. It's extremely important. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to raise this issue of this provincial road that that road has to be opened, reopened as soon as possible. And we would really want to appeal for the community to work with government, work with the municipality in getting that, re, that road reopened. Again, if I can okay. get the contact details of the person who's raised this question, uh, I would be able to talk to that person offline as well. Thank you very right. much. Uh, yeah, what, what I saw happening yesterday was that uh, councillor um, uh, who was with us yesterday, uh, Scopa, um, Kanyele, uh, Honorable, Honorable Kanyele, who was with us yesterday, he gave his email address and his cell number as well. Uh, would you be free to do that or would you rather have their contact details and contact them? I don't know which one, how do you want to handle this? I'm muted, sorry. Would you rather have their, uh, yeah, would no. you rather have their contact details or would you be free to give your email address? As I was saying, Councillor uh, Honourable Kanyele yesterday did give um, uh, uh, his details. Would you rather do that or oh. um, do you prefer to get their... Uh, no, let me, let me give you my details, contact details. Because, because as a public representative, my email address and my cell number are not a secret. Uh, yes, and uh, it's there to be used. So let me give you my email address now. It's uh, G Please? Schneeman. It's spelled G S C H N W E M A double N at GPL dot gov dot za, and my cell number is zero six zero triple nine nine one four six. And I think your team has my email address, which they'd be able right, to find directly. And I know our our our, our uh, colleagues at uh, Mail and Guardian will type those out here uh, shortly for you, Robert Nkomonde, and for you, Donald Kokezo Nkomonde. We're nearing the end of this uh, webinar, uh, Budgets Vote webinar session uh, at half past. So this gives uh, an opportunity to uh, Honorable William Matafeng Majeke to 
talk about uh, this issue highlighted by Stembiso Musito. Um, should I repeat that or you're fine with uh, what I read earlier on? Thanks, Hector. I think I, I uh, got the questions um, <clears throat> from Mr. Musito. It was yes. in relation to <clears throat> sports facilities in rural areas of Mukhali City. And I think he yes. also raised the issue that there is availability of facilities uh, also in Mukhali City. It's safe to say, Dr. Um, Musito, <clears throat> that I, I have indicated that um, one of our uh, primary objectives in terms of infrastructure development as a department is relation to the Combi Courts um, uh, that uh, uh, the Premier will have uh, spoken to uh, in the State of the Province address. And also the MEC in the APP could have also indicated that uh, in the next um, uh, two to three years, we are uh, planning to build around 40 uh, combi courts. What I can just indicate that what has been uh, a delay in terms of outrolling that program, it's in relation to the assets registry uh, that the Auditor General will have uh, raised when the Auditor General was dealing with the uh, annual report of the department. Because of what then happens is that normally when we build these combi courts, we use um, uh, public schools uh, to build uh, the, uh, those particular uh, infrastructure projects of uh, uh, sports. Mm. Uh, then it was a, 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 an a audit query from uh, the Auditor General in terms of the asset, assets registering. But we are dealing with that particular matter with the Auditor General so that when we start outrolling the 40 outstanding um, uh, uh, combi courts, uh, we don't have mm. this particular issue uh, uh, recurring. One of the areas that we will have identified, I think that is a priority of uh, the uh, sixth administration, it's on the western and uh, CDB regions in terms of uh, development. And I can assure you, Mr. Musito, that priorities will be given to the people of Mohali City in terms of those particular uh, combi courts. The last issue that I wanted to clarify, uh, Hector, that you raised with, with regards to the social cohesion uh, carnival in terms of um, uh, it not uh, uh, could have happened in the previous uh, financial year. It's because of what I raised earlier. It's because of the social cohesion carnival attracts a number of people, around 40,000 part participants. We normally host it in September in um, in Twan. And because of the current lockdown regulations, in, uh, in the previous financial year, we could not have that social uh, cohesion uh, carnival. But this time around, we have spoken to the MEC. In fact, in all the other events of the department, we then said to the department, as part of resuscitating the uh, creative industry sector, uh, we need to then go the hybrid uh, model uh, that we have tested in terms of the Mandela Remembrance Walk that we hosted in December, where people were, some of them were physically at the Mandela Remembrance Walk, and others who will have uh, done the walk different in all parts of the world. We had uh, participants from Poland, we had participants from the UK that would have then uh, joined us through, through the hybrid uh, uh, process. So we have spoken to MEC Mbali as a portfolio community to say all our uh, events that we will not uh, be able to host them in the pre previous financial year, just to resuscitate the creative industries. This time around, we need to make sure that we host them, but through the hybrid uh, processes and also adhering to the lockdown uh, regulations. We are hopeful that through uh, the vaccination program that uh, the president will have spoken to uh, towards uh, the end of this, uh, uh, the third quarter, majority of our people will have been uh, vaccinated and uh, the economy will start opening so that we are able to support, and I repeat, to support the creative uh, sectors because that, that's the most affected sector together with the sports and, and recreation sector. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Honorable William Majeke. Uh, and I just want to thank all of you as chairpersons of the different uh, uh, portfolio committees in the GPL. Thanks to GPL for sponsoring this um,
budget vote webinar uh, sessions. Uh, that's it for today. I was told that it must run from uh, for, for one hour, 30 minutes. But I think I can squeeze in a, an opportunity to give each one of you just your parting shots uh, for tonight. Uh, things that um, the public needs to know that we could have left out or that I uh, maybe I, I, I missed to ask as we close and uh, bid everybody goodbye for tonight. And uh, once again, thanks a lot to the mail and God. Uh, shall we start with you, Mayor Rifilwe, uh, Honorable Rifilwe Kegana? Okay, thank you. Thank Your you very much. Shot. Thank you very much, Hector. Thank you for hosting us and assisting us in uh, informing the public about what happens in GPL. I just want to perhaps, uh, not necessarily as a parting shot, but just to add to the concern raised by a member of the public uh, with regards to the Fathers Mangaliso Mkacha Centre. Yes. There could have been other areas that uh, concerns that were raised by members of the public. And I remember when we visited there, there were issues around maladministration in that facility, which I think was a major concern, uh, especially uh, to the councillor, the then councillor at the time, who unfortunately mm. uh, recently passed away. May her soul rest in peace. And just to reassure the community around there, which had concerns to say that a uh, as a portfolio committee, we did uh, say the department must institute a forensic investigation uh, with regards to the maladministration that was taking place there. So I must confirm that uh, as soon as we get the report from the forensic investigation, we will make that public so that uh, the community around there can know exactly what happened. And as the portfolio committee, we should be able to deal with the malpractice that took place at Smangaliso Mukachwa. And also, um, in closing, just a further appeal to members of Gauteng to continue to take care of themselves, observe the health protocols during this difficult time of the pandemic, and ensure that the liars with the original offices, just so that they can know what services uh, the department is offering, so that they can be able to access those services within their communities. They do not have to be stranded. They've got regional offices in all the regions across Houghton. They must just uh, interact uh, with the officials at the regional offices or with their councillors so that they can assist them to access uh, government services so that everybody gets comfort and uh, receives service delivery as they are supposed to. Thank you. Chairperson of the Portfolio Committee on um, Social Development, Honorable Rifilwe Kekana, Riaholeboha. Thank you. And uh, your parting shot, uh, Honorable Gregory Schneemann. I know today no, you were really thrown. You were thrown into the deep end <laughs> because you had to fill in for Honorable uh, KP Diale. But I think that uh, you did very well. <laughs> you know, given the short notice and the short time that you had to prepare yourself to come and prepare this. And I know uh, you told me that we'll be meeting again. I think on uh, uh, this coming Thursday. Your your parting shot, please. And uh, as you are saying goodbye, I don't know. Donald Kekana Gomonda says. Uh, Helena Wales housing project is situated between what 30 and what 26 in Mohali city. I don't know what that means uh, in terms of uh, what uh, your response earlier on. And uh, Robert Ngomonda says Brick Valley project. That's all he's written. So maybe in your parting shot, you might want to allude to that. I don't know why they highlighted those. No, thank you very much. And uh, just to indicate, I am actually a member of the portfolio committee on uh, cocktail human settlements. So it's not as if it would have been a new topic to me. Now look, uh, in terms of the Helena Wheels project, Brickvale, um, I think uh, once I get the contact details for the person who's posed the question, uh, we'll interact with him directly and get more information and we'll also be able to give feedback. So I think let me leave it at that, but I know about the Brickvale project, um, but uh, I think that's the best thing that I can do at this stage on terms of that one. I just want to raise two things. Firstly, in terms of human settlements, um, one of the things I didn't manage to indicate earlier on 
is that in terms of the budget uh, allocation for this year, uh, an amount of 1.1 billion rand has uh, been made available uh, to the department for informal settlements upgrading. It's called an informal mm -hmm. settlements upgrading partnership grant. And that's amount, an amount of 1.1 billion rand uh, that the department needs to utilize in this uh, mm -hmm. current financial year. As a portfolio committee, we haven't been given necessarily the exact informal settlements that they'd be focusing on, but I thought I should raise that because it's an important point to raise, uh, particularly given the number of informal settlements uh, that we have in Gauteng. And uh, we, we will be closely monitoring the use of those funds by the department in this particular financial year to make sure that they're efficiently and effectively used. Um, I also just wanted to say as well that some of the money that uh, Cocta has received, some of the 611 million rand that they've received in this for this financial year, some of that money is being used to provide uh, urgently and critical, critically needed firefighting equipment in some of the local municipalities. Um, mm. And uh, there are details on that in the, 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 the presentations that made to us. So there, some of that money is being used to make those purchases. Just one other point to raise as I conclude is that uh, one of the responsibilities of COCTA as well is uh, disaster management. And uh, mm. there's a provincial disaster management center. There is a new one on the cards that they'll be looking at building. But the, the provincial disaster management team uh, works together with municipalities and coordinating efforts in responding, responding to disasters that may happen in the province. My last parting shot is I would want to make an appeal uh, on behalf of the Portfolio Committee to residents of Gauteng in all the different municipalities. Please pay your services. By paying your services and by paying your rates and taxes, it enables municipalities to deliver much needed services in your area. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable um, uh, Gregory uh, Schneemann. And uh, we wish uh, Honorable KPD a speedy recovery. And thank you so much for uh, all the inputs there and the responses to you know, the questions asked and uh, to you as well, Honorable Rifilu Ekagana. Now, Honorable um, Alfina Ndlovana, there was no question for you. So I suppose that people are happy with your budget. So what are your, what is your parting shot uh, uh, since you're looking at um, the portfolio uh, committee on, uh, save, uh, on community safety? Okay, th th thanks. Uh, uh, for hosting us so that we should we be able to share vote 10 with the community of Gauteng. Uh, lastly, I want to share with the community that within that 3% increase of the budget, which is little, we the department will be able to appoint 133 additional traffic officers to improve traffic law enforcement. And uh, the law enforcement agency, we, we will we'll work with the community to fight crime and gender-based violence so that we have a free crime uh, area in Gauteng. And lastly, uh, the viewers and the listeners, let us all respect the protocol for COVID-19 after the funeral, let us not go and get up for after tears so that we respect what has been said in terms of the protocol. Thank you for hosting us to share with you a budget vote 10. Thank you. You are welcome, ma'am, and thank you. Saying thanks to you uh, for what you have shared with us this evening. And finally, Honorable William Macheke, um, uh, Sport, Art, Culture, and Recreation, your closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Brian Ta, for hosting us. And thanks to Miriam Kadian, as well as the leadership of the Houghton Provincial legislature in making this uh, platform available for us to engage the people of Gauteng in terms of uh, 
public uh, participation. Uh, in closing, I just wanted to indicate one of the areas that I would have uh, not spoken to in terms of the Houghton uh, Film Commission. I think one of our priorities uh, as the portfolio committee is to really work uh, hand in glove with the Houghton Film Commission in promoting Houghton as a destination for filming. Um, there are quite a number of um, areas that uh, as a portfolio committee we feel that Houghton Film, Film Commission can make them available uh, for film producers. Areas like okay. the Maropin, uh, Cradle of Humankind, you know. Uh, every now and then mm. when you watch uh, uh, films uh, that uh, are produced by uh, a big uh, f a film productions, you always see the flag of uh, uh, the United States of America, but you hardly see the flag of South Africa when people come and film in our own space. So it's high time that we jointly work with the Houghton Film Commission in making sure that we promote uh, the Mandela Bridge, we promote the Mandela House, we promote um, the heritage route uh, of uh, Houghton, uh, our struggle heroes and heroines that would have contributed to, towards democracy that we're enjoying uh, today. Uh, we've also spoken to the MEC uh, that one of the priorities that we must look into is the Houghton Sports uh, a confederation in terms of the NPO funding, because one of the elements that we would have picked up is that previously the department have, have been uh, funding uh, the people who not necessarily are from the townships. And part of the responsibility of the Houghton Sports uh, Confederation is to make sure that they do uh, sports development in townships. And we have then decided that we are going to really make sure that uh, the department prioritize uh, money uh, to be available to NPOs that really deals with sports development um, in townships. Uh, we have also spoken to the MEC that there is a, a need for us to increase uh, funding in terms of the grinding aid uh, that we've, uh, uh, we've made available for NPOs uh, in Houghton. The closing is on the 30th of June. I want to call the people of Houghton that have not yet applied to make sure that they apply for the grinding aid I know that uh, we had a, a roundtable discussion with beneficiaries of the grinding aid, and we made a commitment that we are going to make sure, as a portfolio committee, that the department really increase that particular funding uh, so that it cut across the province uh, of Houghton, and also to increase funding for events. I've spoken to this, and I want to re-emphasize this particular uh, point, that we have spoken to the MEC. We said to the MEC, MEC, make sure that in your a reprioritization in your itemized uh, uh, budgeting for this um, particular uh, financial year. Let's make sure that we increase a uh, budget for events so that we then resuscitate uh, the creative industry sector as well as the sports sector. The last issue that I wanted to raise that is very close to my heart, Hector, uh, it's in relation to the um, uh, performance uh, protection amendment bill that is currently okay. sitting with the president, um, that we know that uh, is something very close to our arts and culture practitioners, that um, we, we have spoken to the MEC that uh, the MEC needs to engage uh, Minister Natin Tetwa to engage the president in order for us to finalize that particular amendment bill, because mm. it will really um, respond to the outcry uh, out there of our uh, creative uh, practitioners in terms of their protection. Um, there are quite a number of um, issues involved in that particular bill that will transform uh, the creative industry. And the sooner we finalize that bill, uh, it will really respond to the outcry uh, of our people uh, within this particular sector. Thank you so much, Hector. Thank you to all of you chairpersons. Uh, it has been a, a fruitful one this evening. Actually, I don't want to close. Let me allow Sipo Nwala. He says, uh, thank you. Uh, very much impressed presentations of the chairpersons and the way they are responding to questions. I think that's a 
best way to close this. And a big thanks to Mail and Guardian. Uh, Sean, thank you so much on the technicals. My apologies for forgetting your name earlier on, Sean. Uh, he's been uh, supporting us technically behind the scenes. Uh, Denise, uh, 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 Crystal, thank you so much. And the uh, Houghton Provincial Legislature for sponsoring these um, uh, budget vote webinar sessions. We have the next one coming tomorrow. For those who are attending today, please. Be sure to catch the next one tomorrow at 6 p.m. And our listeners on uh, community radio stations that uh, I mentioned earlier on, there's Paley FM, Eldos FM, Rainbow FM, and Teta FM. Thank you so much for listening or streaming in to this uh, broadcast. Realibo, have yourself a great evening. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hector. Uh, and bye, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And good evening. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. We can log out. Thank you.